Good evening, everybody. Neil, show number? 760. No, no 962. 962. Welcome back, everybody, to the Off the Lip Radio Show, live from the Santa Cruz boardroom right here in Pleasure Point, California. So if you are uh, out there on the World Wide Web, good evening. Tonight, Neil, we have a great guest back. Look at how polished everything is. Jason, he's, he's back. Well, yeah, he's polished. Uh, yeah. The fire chief at Central Fire right here in Santa Cruz, California. Yeah. Uh, how, Jason, welcome back to the show. First off, when I say Central Fire, what does that entail? How many stations and how many trucks? Yeah, great Great point. In 2021, we consolidated with Aptos and Central. So if you live in the uh, middle of the district, um, like we are now on 41st Avenue, um, that's Legacy Central Fire. If you are south of here, past Capitola, Aptos, Rio Del Mar, La Selva, that was the former Aptos La Selva. Mm -hmm. So now we're seven stations, 10 facilities. At each station, there's at least one engine and probably some accessory stuff there as well. Um, lots of lots of equipment. Uh, about 130 employees, uh, 55 square miles, around 70,000 uh, residents. 55 square miles. And during fire season, no, we'll we'll talk more about that. One thing I want to bring up really quick. Um, I see a lot of new trucks. Yeah, we. <laughs> In 2018, we bought four new engines, and then this year we took another delivery of two new wildland engines, to your point about mm -hmm. the wild, wildfire season. Um, we have been ordering trucks to replace trucks and, and fire engines to replace existing ones. Uh, what happened during the COVID period was there was this huge, what you guys remember, you couldn't get uh, merchandise, you couldn't right. get, um, and so the same things, the supply chain func uh, lack of function hit the fire service as well. And so there's a backlog for fire engines, fire apparatus. Um, and so now those things are starting to come through. But right now, if we ordered a fire engine today, uh, it'd take about 700 days. Until TCU, we wow. who was it who came on our show? Yes. And we talked about the CZU fire. Mm -hmm. and, it, and it would have been less, uh, you know, it would have been a different cup of tea, as I say, back home in England, because the, fire, the, the air support was stationed up in the coast of Sacramento, the, and if they have now they have planes in Morgan Hill. Is that correct? Yeah, they probably did then too. Uh, it could have been. So if you remember, CZU was the result of a bunch of lightning strikes. Right. So Santa Clara had fires. We had fires. North Bay had fires. Right. Um, so if they're out already on those other fires, yeah, you, you do, there's only a, there's only so many resources to go. Do around. you have? Do we have planes? Do we have planes that are closer to us now than before? Or? Hollister Air Base is Hollister. the closest. Yeah, and then there's helicopters um, just on over 17. Yeah. Um, just on the other side by Lexington. Yeah. There's a helicopter. They're actually it's one of the new Blackhawks that they outfitted to, to carry water. So when you first came in tonight, you were saying I, I said, "Hey, it's fire season." And yeah. Everybody watching and listening knows that. You did say you currently have you've sent trucks and people to other fires at this moment. Yeah. Just today, we sent the city of Santa Cruz sent an engine. The city of Watsonville sent an engine, and they're both going down to. Uh, San Bernardino County, mm -hmm. um, to one of the big fires down there. The one that's, I think it's the one headed towards uh, Big Bear Lake. Um, and then I think Scotts Valley, uh, Scotts Valley Fire has also got an engine out. We haven't been participating yet because we've had a few mechanical issues, but uh, we're back in the game now. So if another order comes in from the state, we're ready to jump in. And, and What's the, the preparedness that you have now with the CZU, CZU fire, but the preparedness that you have, is it what? Doing what you need to do, or is it, or is it is letting the public know what they need to do, oh. or is it a bit of both? Which, because you guys, they need you, you need them. Okay. Yeah, Neil, it's an excellent point. One of the things, basically, since CZU, um, we, we, the community turned it up a notch. We have these things called um, Firewise communities, and basically, if we come to the neighborhood, we've got these these inspectors that will come out and inspect your neighborhood. It's like up North Rodeo Gulch, Old San Jose Road, yeah. Aptos Hills. Yeah. Um, and we'll come and do an inspection of your property. But what we're really trying to encourage people to do on a community level is get with your neighbors, get to know your neighbors, and work as a group to create a fire buffer around your entire neighborhood so yeah. that when we show up, your house isn't going to be something that we're – it's not safe for us to stay at. We want to be able to protect yeah. all the homes possible. Because there's a lot of building going on that back right there right now, right? Um, uh, no, as far as I can see, when I drove from Boulder Creek over to Bonnie Dunes down to the coast. Oh, and the CZU burn scar. Yeah, yeah, a lot of yeah. A lot of it's been a long time. Obviously, People it was going back. 
2020, yeah, people are starting to finish their buildings now, but it's been ongoing since, yeah. since the fire went out. It's crazy to think, um, like, Paradise had a fire threat after a fire. Yeah, this is la- this last this summer. Was, yeah. yeah, this last summer. Is, is Can that, like, you figure our mountains burn. Is it safe? Yeah. Or does... It'll come back. Yeah, it'll it'll the undergrowth will continue to burn uh, to grow every single year that it doesn't burn or it's not treated, and so you get a little credit for probably five to ten years because it's not um, it hasn't grown to the depth that we had. Like CZU, we hadn't had a fire here in over a hundred years, so there's mm-hmm. plenty of stuff to burn, and it was super dry. If you remember, we had those all that dry lightning that came through, um, and it was it was not really <coughs> exciting here I'm, for I'm several months. Seeing that, 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 the house I had an outpost overlooking the cement. Yes. Road. When I woke up that night, you see the whole night, like, mm-hmm. oh, shit, this yeah. is not mm-hmm. going to be good. Yeah, and, and if it, you remember, that's a great point because it was super clear. It was super dry it was super air. Super clear. Yeah, yeah, and that helped fuel those all those lightning magnificent strikes. Magnificent view of all these lightning strikes. Yeah. Out of, but, but you could see what was going to happen. The day that fire started, my wife and I drove up to Davenport, and uh, people evacuated down to the beach. And they had no idea. And we were just kind of spectating what was going on. And people were getting calls of that, about their homes being gone and their animals unknown oh, wow. and just breaking down, dropping to their knees. It was the most surreal thing. Yeah. I'll never forget it. It was yeah. incredible. Um, we have other parts of this county that haven't had a fire in 100 years. Is that Are, are you guys prepared for another fire oh, like a gosh, CZU? It's, it's a really tough question. So like to the point that we haven't had other fires since CZU, you're exactly right, and that's why... Our organization is working so hard with our inspectors to get out into the wildland urban interface. The state, CAL FIRE, is also has their same, the similar effort on the state responsibility area, so the, those areas that are covered by CAL FIRE. They're also trying to do the same thing. But the, the real function is there's more fire potential than there are firefighters available to fight any of these fires in any county, and that's mm-hmm. why we send our folks down to uh, San Bernardino County or wherever it is throughout right. the state. And so... Um, are we prepared? Well, there's probably total in this county, probably around 300 firefighters total, if you count everybody wow. out. And so, you know, CZU probably had 1,200 firefighters here when it was at its, its, its full max. So um, to answer your question, we're trying to be prepared. The community is engaging with us and making improvements, uh, but these things take time, right? right? It took 100 years to get to this problem, right. but it'll take another 100 years, hope, uh, hopefully During shorter. CZU, you uh, L.A. sent a bunch of trucks up, mm-hmm. and they were parked out here. I gave them employee discounts. <laughs> they were the best guys. It seems like you really have a good camaraderie amongst other fire departments. Is that why you meet with other fire? You said you had a captain's meeting or a chief's meeting. Yeah, so uh, on the countywide level, we meet once a month, and then I think it's actually in October, though all of the fire chiefs from California get together and we have a big, one big giant, they call it Cal Chiefs meeting. Um, and that's where we can share ideas, things that work, things that didn't. Um, so yes, and to your point, like we all are fighting the same fight. We're all in the mm-hmm. same battle. We all know what, like if you're in Ventura County, it's the same right. experience that we have. It's right. just in Ventura County, not here. Um, so there's a lot of, like, they empathize because L.A. burns just like we were burning in, in CZU. So they right. know the feeling. I'm going to go way back. Ten years. Maybe longer than that. <laughs> Ten years is way back? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Seascape. I'm not saying Seascape. Aptos. Oh. It, it, issues politically with the chief and so forth. Um, was, do you remember that? Uh, there's been a few. It's but been yeah, a few. I, I know. I know. It's, yeah, it's been a few. And, and Are you talking involved. about when they, whether Central would t- absorb I Aptos? I that, I think. There was an issue with the chief and there was issues hmm. with that. But anyway, you know, I think that you didn't Central Fire take over Aptos. Uh, it was a consolidation, so both organizations came together yeah. and formed a new organization, and it wasn't like a takeover. Yeah, uh, they call it a consolidation. So what we did is we took two legacy organizations and we really just blended. So we had two fire chiefs, and now we have one. Um, we we were able to, the way the structure of the Aptos organization, the way the structure of the Central organization worked out, it was easy to blend. Yeah. Um, and then I'll give credit to the people, the employees, right, right. who really did the heavy lift of being now crossing and working with each other um, pretty seamlessly. Like there's, it's not all unicorns and lollipops all the time. There's still yeah. some cultural differences, but for the most part, um, it's been a pretty. We seem to know a lot of kids that want to join the fire department. Uh, well, I know. John Stone's kid was his. 
Riley. Riley. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, the kids from the And uh, it, so I, Ryan, my, yeah, my buddy also... Matt Burt's been a, a big uh, trying to get in. Oh yeah, yeah Matt. Matt Burt. He just got hired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Matt Burt works here. Oh and, really? Yeah, and, oh, and, I know he's a skate kid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and I tell you what, you're lucky to get Matt Burt. Like that is the. He's in my kid. opinion, I would take him back in a second. <laughs> yeah, like, and I actually was a reference for him, and I, and I told your the recruiter, I was like, you know, you're crazy not to get him because that's what you want is a lot of Matt Burt's. Um, I have a question that we're going to segue on to. Lately, there's been so much discussion about electric bikes. And do you guys go out to the – I mean, every time there's an electric bike crash of one of these 12-year-olds laying in the street, you guys get a call, right, to go – yeah, um, and Aptos has been a couple in the last. It's few. it's it's, it's an epidemic, I yeah. would say. An epid- um, it, there's a lot of potential in those electric bikes, and there's a difference between the bikes that they have just the throttle and no right. pedals, and the ones that have the pedal assist. Uh, we just had a call last week, a pretty significant one on 17th and Capitola Road, where a couple kids got really hurt. That was um, a non-pedal. Correct. It was yeah. like, what it looked like a, motor. a motorcycle. Yeah. Um, yeah, we go. We call it's like a vehicle accident. We send a bunch of people to go help out um, because those things can go like 28 miles an hour, unhelmeted against a vehicle. Like you're mm-hmm. not going to win. Um, one of the things I would suggest for people in the in the market for electric bikes, especially if it's for like a high school kid or somebody that doesn't have their license, um, don't get an electric bike that has another seat on it. Yeah. So that your kid can have that bring their Bodies. their buddy and yeah. you know make some bad decisions. Um, and then the helmets, obviously, are our number one thing, a safety piece that we're looking for. Um, if you go to any of the local high schools, Santa Cruz High, Soquel High, Harbor High, the bike racks are littered with electric bikes. It's become a mm-hmm. phenomenon, and the same thing is happening in Southern California that's happening here. You know, it's not so many parents go, hey, hey, here, son, here's a you know, bike that does 30 miles an hour. No, hey, no, well, I, don't understand, I don't understand that. I mean, Jason's on point. Having a back seat is like See, you're, you're, suddenly you become liable for that passenger, yeah. right? So the parent of that bike, their insurance company becomes liable for the passenger. I see that. I, I go to have coffee, coffee at the Loft Coffee Shop at Twin Lakes Church. Mm-hmm. Across the street is where they For real. You do the, the motorcycle. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right, 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 right. yeah. There's no kid over there. With a bike. There's no... <laughs> nothing, yeah. right? No. Yeah. No. There's no kid over there with a bike. There's no licensing or no, training that you have to have. Yeah. There's nothing yet. No. I, I think it's coming, but... Um, when you roll up onto a, um, you're, you're not law enforcement. You you pick up the pieces. But when you roll up on somebody, when a kid's on a, basically an electric motorcycle, do you hope they get cited for that? Mm. That's a tough one, TC, because, you know, there's injuries involved and right. salt in the wound and those kinds of things. Um, that, luckily for us, we don't have to make a judgment call on that because that's like CHP or law enforcement's job. Um we hope that a lesson is learned and that a, a child or whomever is not hurt too badly. That's what we really hope, and that hopefully people maybe will see this and say, like, hey, let's right. let's ditch the rad bike or whatever brand it is uh, mm-hmm. for one without a seat and make sure our kids... Well, and I do home. know that the, 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 the accident that we're talking about, a, a child was seriously hurt. Yeah. And so I, I, I will agree with you on that, that not the injury, but I, we all see them. Everybody sees them. Every day I see There's them. two of them, three yeah. of them sometimes, and they're wearing shorts and tank tops, and you're get like, oh my god, <laughs> dad, get a freaking yeah. helmet. The yeah. helmet on the handle. Okay, I want to ask mm-hmm. Jason, give me your, when, give, what was your idea? What was your first thought about becoming a fire member of the fire department? And can you give us a tiered idea of how you made it to where you are right now? Oh, this, mm. is, this is for maybe the kids listening, maybe teenagers listening, wants to start something in the fire department. How did you start, and how did you make your way up to where you are right now? Yeah, that's a pretty loaded question, but I'll be—I'll try to be sure. brief. Um, so, uh, in high school, I went to Santa Cruz High here in town, and um, I won't—I was going to college after high school, and I want—I was getting close to graduating, and I wanted a job where I could be physically active, and I—I I didn't want to work in an office. I work in an office now, but that kind of backfired. Yeah. Um, but I wanted a job where I could be physically active, I could be physically fit, and it was encouraged to be physically fit. So I was looking for that job. A friend of mine's dad was a firefighter in San Jose. I did a couple of ride-alongs in downtown San Jose, and like my eyes were like this big. Um, so I fell in love with it and then started down the process. To your question about how to become a firefighter, yeah. 
Um, there's never been a better time because the job market for blue collar, hardworking folks, um, there's less and less people applying for these positions than, um, than I've well, ever seen. I don't seen. know why that is. Interesting. Um, I've got a guess. I think if you can work from home and be in your pajamas all yeah, day and make $150,000, you maybe yeah. you take that option. But, um, so Central Fire has a paid call program. It's like essentially like kind of an apprenticeship or we call these folks in when we have a whole bunch of stuff going like mm -hmm. CCU. We brought a bunch of paid call in and they help augment the staff. Um, we train them. They need to go to a training twice a month. And then we like to hire out of that Absolutely. pool of people. Matt Burt. And so, <laughs> we, and we love hiring local folks because we know they're invested in the organization. Right. They're not going to go to wherever it is they they were coming from. Because if you join, if you join, if you, we, we've had the CHP guys on the show. You join the C CHP, you're likely to get sent to like Oakland or somewhere yeah, far away. A lot of they cut their teeth in like Los Angeles County and yeah, and right. Alameda County. And here you can yeah. you can make local here. Yeah, you can. You have the opportunity to stay here. and You don't have to go anywhere. You can stay here for your whole entire career. Okay. Um, another piece that would be helpful is education, obviously. Um, the fire service is becoming more and more sophisticated with the education right. requirements, right. as well as um, EMT and paramedic. Those, right. are, those are also really uh, kind of fast tracks. Yeah. Is EMT service. mandatory now? Yeah, you gotta, you, all of our folks have EMT mm -hmm. training at a, at a bare minimum. And then, um, really, the quickest way into the fire service for those young people looking for a career in the fire service is uh, is through paramedicine. Okay, um, that's that's the fastest way to do it. That's I'm how going, I did it. I'm going to TC's house tonight. Uh huh. I, I'm going to TC's house tonight for some dinner and drinks for the for the debate. Oh. <laughs> okay. To make sure I'm not going to catch the house, I'm going to catch fire. What should TC have in his house in order to prevent some, some a, a house fire? Can I tell you what I do have? What do you did, sure. I have four fire extinguishers. Okay. Oh, really? Yes. That's really oh, I know. Shit. I do. Above average. Yeah. yeah. No, fire. I literally, outside every door, there's a of fire extinguisher. Of course. Oh. Well, the, I I race cars, Neil. I know you got... You got I, I've actually Petroleum. This petroleum. I have a fire... I, my brother was the fire chief at Standard Oil Refinery. And when Hallen, Hallen mm -hmm. was available, yeah, well, yeah. it's not available really anymore, yeah. but he got me a bunch of those fire extinguishers. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> because, yeah, because here's why. They right. don't ruin wiring. Yeah. Are we lucky yeah. in Pleasure Point? They, they yeah, so strong. if anyone's in, anybody living in Pleasure Point, <laughs> if, the, if the frying pan catches on fire, come to my house. I got you covered. The, the thing about fire extinguishers, and, and to your point about like a grease fire on the kitchen stove, there's a couple ways to put those out. Super simple. You can just cover the grease fire. You can turn off the heat remove, or remove it from the heat. Uh, but having a fire extinguisher in your kitchen or in your garage are two common places where we Alarm. see fires. Mm -hmm. Smoke detectors. I, I stopped beeping the other day. Oh, screw this thing. No, no, no. Oh, Neil. 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 Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just say. <laughs> You're in our district, Neil? You live in Central's district? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, okay. I won't give you we'll back. I won't give you back. <laughs> <laughs> we need to get to another one. Uh, so the bedrooms for fire or for fire smoke detectors rather. Yeah. Uh, in every bedroom and then in the common areas. And so really, what you're looking for, the reason why fires are deadly is because oftentimes if they happen at night, it's when you're sleeping. When you're awake, you're yeah. up and about moving around your house. Yeah. It's at night when you're asleep and you don't want the smoke to kill you. Um, so you want that smoke detector to be able to trigger you to wake you up. Okay. And carbon monoxide too, right? Carbon yeah. monoxide, yeah. That one you'll have low to the ground. Um, oftentimes they'll plug into a plug on the, on the mm -hmm. side of your wall, so you want that one low to the yeah. ground. I'll have that, I would suggest, wherever you have gas burning appliances. Mm -hmm. So water heaters, ranges, furnace, furnace stuff like that. Yeah. Do you, um, I know historically Central would come to your house and would, if you were like an elderly human and wanted advice to make your house safe historically i know you used to do offer that is that still something you guys do yeah absolutely so this as well as our defensible space for the wildland urban interface area if you call our offices and you have a fire related question like fire safety like uh, mm -hmm. neil's smoke mm -hmm. detector mm -hmm. or your extinguishers uh, we'll come out and provide you guidance for either how to maybe yeah. you used it and you need to get it recharged or whatever the situation is and then for um those folks that are uh, low income or uh, can't replace their smoke detector. Yeah, uh, we'll we can provide smoke detectors right. for those folks who need them. Can I just say one thing? Sure. A great service that Central does mm -hmm. as a business owner. They stop by yearly, and uh, they're <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, they're like, hey, 
You got an extension cord over there, bro. <laughs> Ix nay that thing. And they're like, your fire extinguisher. But you know what? It's well, preventative. Yeah, it's preventative uh, work that can save a disaster. That's your totem by here, right? Yeah, we have um, a, an inspection program for yeah. businesses, okay. and we want them to make sure that their fire extinguisher is valid. It's been tested mm -hmm. within, I can't remember now if it's three or five years. And then um, that, like TC was saying, we don't want to have daisy chains and a bunch of extension cords because those can create fire hazards. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so we want to prevent as many fires because look at all the merchandise in here. Like you would hate the loot. Like right. you'd be bummed. And when they come by, you? they're so cool because they're like, look at, <laughs> they're all look at that daisy chain's got to go. We'll be by next week. They're just you shopping. You cruise by yeah. Christmas morning every day. You get your cup of coffee in the morning. Uh huh. And you, I didn't you, you got down East Cliff Drive. Mm hmm Okay. Once a, once a day. Yeah. Do and I see the trucks? How often do you think these guys go down? What do you, like, it's still a contest between you and I. Oh, how many? Hold how many on. times these guys go by the cruise down? In a year? Or no, a in month? a day. In a, a day? day? 24 hour period, yeah. A lot. No oh, shit. Okay, I just want to say something. <laughs> I think they had they were involved in the turnouts along East Coast. Oh, to pull over and check yes. 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 Because the turnouts yes. are the same, same size, size as the engines. Oh. Very convenient, yeah. Um, yeah. We, we also use those turnouts when we're pulling people out of the ocean. Oh, that's that. Yeah, you, know. <laughs> you know, and I will commend you because uh, I feel like your water rescue and safety that's program problem, is, is as good as anybody's. And uh, and I know some of the some of your crew, and they are watermen. They have no fear of the ocean. No. And they will rescue these people who buy Costco boards and paddle do, do, out on a ten foot go, day. Do you ever go into Buell Surf Shop or to Freelance Surf Shop and go, why are you renting these people these boards? It's eight feet at Thirty Eighth Avenue. It's high tide. They can't get out. And. It becomes your sponsor. You look at the look on his face, uh, says it all. Regulating commerce is a challenging thing for the fire department to do, but um, to your point, TC, about our water rescue program, uh, we've got an ex what, probably 30, 32 members of our water rescue program, a jet ski that we help to augment our rescues. Um, and to your point about the, the skill of our water folks, fantastic. Um, some big wave mm -hmm. surfers in there, some yeah. like really, really good, um, ocean folks. And they pull way more people out of the ocean than they, at a high tide than they've ever pulled out of a burning building. And since I've been there, because it, because the sports, the sports taken off by a hundredfold. And there's so many folks out there and, yeah. and you're exactly right. We call it the, um, the Holy Trinity, it's a, a holiday weekend, it's sunny out, and there's swell. A high and tide. High tide, high tide yeah. coming up, we're mm -hmm. going to start pulling people out. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, uh, you know, the deal is, is we rescue them or they die. <laughs> For a lot of them. <laughs> Seriously. You know, it's, That's uh, a little dramatic. Well, no, I'm just saying that it's, uh, people go out there thinking they're, well, I swam they in a river they, last they, week, they, I can do it. I think it's a giant, I think it's, yeah. they just put, they just, they just, the big dip of the dip, the, uh, it's the not board board. uh it's not safe no. and uh and so luckily central exists <laughs> yeah well for those folks and but i will say that oftentimes we're aided in those ocean rescues harbor patrol with harbor patrol state park state parks mm -hmm. and lifeguards uh city of santa cruz has a jet ski as well and like really it's those folks in the community that are out there surfing that will also help provide the rescue efforts before we even get there, halfway, yeah. most of the time they're they're halfway in or on the beach already by the mm -hmm. time I get there. So you, that's you, a testament to our Do you make the call going, okay, guys, you got to go, you got to go. Do you make the call on, on, uh, up on the cliff of who should be going out there to rescue people? Yeah, so we, well, only some of our folks are rescue swimmers. Right. Um, and we leave it to them because they're the experts, really, if they're okay. going to be able to go in. Like uh, some of the stuff that they go in, especially at night and the high yeah. tides in the mm -hmm. winter, like I, there's no way I would do that. But we do it. Uh, those of them that are, are trained and equipped to do it. Um, and so they get the ultimate decision because sometimes a person like me might not be the subject matter expert for where to go in or whatever. So we, we kind of leave that decision yeah. up to the experts. Let me ask you, a, a, day, a, day, a day in the fire department for you, what was your most satisfactory day? Like saving somebody perhaps. And going, you know, that, you, after you, at the end of the day, you go, this is, this is what I joined the force for. This is why I'm here. Um... Well, it probably was, um, it was probably a wildland fire. Do you guys remember the Trabing fire? No. Um, it was down in past Aptos, okay. in uh, the Aptos Hills area. Um, we had oh, a bunch of houses burned. A bunch of houses right? burned. A yes. bunch of um, livestock, horses mm -hmm. had to get evacuated. 
Um, probably that day was one of the most memorable because we worked super hard. Um, we got to go home that night into yeah. our own beds here at the stations. Um, but we did a bunch of really good work and saved a bunch of property, a bunch of buildings and homes. Um, probably my most satisfactory day. Yeah. Um, there's been other days when we've, we've also done some good, but that one really sticks out to me. Number one, because how hard we worked. It was, yeah. if you remember, I, you don't remember, Neil, but like it was super hot day. Yeah, yeah. I remember. I was fishing morning. that day. It was, it was super red clear. hot. Yep. It was by the Buena Vista exit. Is yeah. where it started. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, remember, remember that, that fire? Yeah, remember yes. That. Yeah. It was a really bad fire. Yeah. Um, a lot of eucalyptus was involved. That's what guy lives. Yeah. That's what guy lives up there. Mm-hmm. Um, so tons, of, tons of fire. We did a bunch of really hard work, um, and and saved a lot of property in that in that fire. Yeah. Where where, where do you go? Where, where can you go? You, where you, you're fire chief right now, right? Yes. Individually, where can you where can you take your career? Are you not as far as you can go? Or? Uh, that's it for our organization. Okay. Yeah, that's the top of the heap, the one that answers all the questions. Um, that's the, that's so the limit, yeah. Everything rolls uphill to Every you? Total. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Does you, that worry you? Um, to be like in charge of, I mean, you have 100, how many? 130. 130 employees. You're kind of under the microscope. When the shit hits the fan, it's your, your responsibility, right? Does that worry you yeah. ever? Uh, immensely. And that's probably why I look as old as I look. <laughs> um, because it is a lot you of stress. You look like you're 25 years old for crying out loud. Uh, right, well, no, he's a, he is, he's a young looking guy. But, but, but it, let's just be honest. In most organizations, when the, when, when the worst happens, it all comes, yeah. whether or not you, you know. It's, it's essentially on, on my watch or mm-hmm. whomever that right. fire chief is. It's, it's your res- ultimate responsibility. So if somebody's making a bad decision or something bad happens, yeah. like ultimately it's, it's my responsibility for things that we did right or things that we did wrong even. Yeah. So, yeah, that, it's a lot of pressure. You know, what, you know why he gets to wear the fancy hat? Is <laughs> because he's done a great job. Yeah. You know, you, and let's be honest. You started at the very beginnings mm-hmm. and have worked your way up. And uh, success is for the people who want it. Yeah. You know, kids, so. right? You have kids? Yeah. I have two children, That's yeah. That's right. How old are they? Uh, one's 20 and one's 16. Shit, 20? Yeah, yeah. Damn. You know what else, too? He's young. He's going to retire early. What's next? Um, so, for me personally, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't have any plans uh, for me personally other than um, my contract expires at the end of 2025. I'm going to at least work to that piece. And then it's up to the electors to decide if they want to keep me or if they're moving on to something is else. It a public election, is it a public election or is it a, a, uh, a government uh, Oh, so I get appointed. We have a board of directors. We've got five board members. Okay. I get appointed by that group, yeah. but they are elected. Okay. Um, so there's three seats coming up. Uh, well, they were good. They would normally be in the November okay. election, but... Um, Mike Hushaw's on there, I think. Yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mike, oh, he is? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. He's been on the show. Yeah. Oh, has he? Yeah. Yeah, he's mm-hmm. a great guy. We track we track everywhere. We do, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Should I call Mike and be like, hey, Jason's in. <laughs> I talked to him I talked to him earlier today. I yeah. think you should talk about Mike uh the, our friend that died the other day who passed away. Hudson. Oh well no John Hudson. John Hudson. Downhill skateboarder. Yeah. yeah. Well that we'll talk about that. Yeah. Um my thing is if you don't if the board says no, are you back steering one of those oh, big engineers? No. <laughs> Is that- um, no. My uh, my skills have devolved in the whole the driving, firefighting piece. I'm more answering administration. emails, talk on the phone, answer mm-hmm. questions, right. uh, attend meetings. That's one of my favorite things. Get paid by the meeting. Office guy. Uh, yeah. 100%. Public speaker. He want to be. Look at him. He's a public speaker. Yeah. Yeah. Office expert. Yeah. Yeah. Thank well, you. Thank I you. gotta say, Central has, in my opinion, is a fantastic fire agency and is a huge, huge part of our community. And it's and, the only fire truck you can see driving around the circle on top of that truck. And I like the new paint <laughs> jobs too. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah good. I do. Black. Yeah, the black yeah. guy. It's, it's it's like stealth. Yeah, cool, yeah, I like it. Um, you know, every once in a while, somebody will say we're trying to militarize the fire service no. with that paint. Look, um, we, we're happy with it. We like it a lot. I it like it a lot. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I like it. And we well, uh, got the march for the red, red, and black. Oh, yeah. and, and, and real quick before we go, is there a, a future for the Capitola station to be moved? We we we've heard that for years. Is that in the future? Yeah. Well, thank you, TC, for teeing that one up for me. Um, yeah. And I could go on on this for a while. So you guys, please. We're good. We're good. We're, we're good. <laughs> um, so in the November election, like we were talking about before. Central Fire's got a measure. Central Fire's board of directors said, like, we want to put this measure on the ballot. It's called Measure R, R for rescue. 
Um, but in that is we're asking the community, hey, are you willing to invest in us so that we can invest in our infrastructure? So to your point mm -hmm. about Capitola, um, yes, that station was built in 1955, I believe. Yeah. Um, it's in the flood and tsunami zones. Yeah. It flooded in 2011. I was, I was there that I, night. Yeah. I was there. Actually, it flooded twice in two yeah, days. Yeah, it was right? this much mud yeah. inside there. And then um, the Soquel Station is another one of our priorities. That's flooded yeah. twice, mm -hmm. last two winters. Yeah. Um, so, and that was built, I, I want to say that was built in 1956. And what has happened around us is the community has developed around us, and those are old legacy volunteer agencies. Uh, they're not built for the size of the equipment today. They're not built for mixed gender crews, um, and they're beyond mm -hmm. their useful life. And so one of the asks of Measure R is, can we start investing in our infrastructure? We have to ask the public for that. They have to vote yes on Measure R. 66% uh, um, of the voting public that day has to vote yes for us yeah. to be able to have access yeah. to that. So among other things, um, facilities and more fire engines. And because fire engines, when I started, were cost $350,000, which is a lot of money. Um, and it took a year to get when we started mm -hmm. the build. Today, like I told you earlier, it's over 700 days to get, and they caught a fire engine, the, the uh, ones with the cool paint that you guys yeah. saw, it cost $1.2 million today for one of those. We've got yeah. seven stations, we've got a lot of equipment we got to fill out. Yeah. So, so some mm. of that Measure R money can be earmarked for um, fire, safe, fire s equipment, like fire engines. Well, I think both those stations are in not the best spot, or are modernized like what you need. Capitola is a tiny little it's building. It's a tiny little yeah. cluster. And thing, like yeah. I said, I was there. We actually went to City Hall that night to try to get a skateboard park built in Capitola. <laughs> so, true story. There was a council the, meeting? Yeah, there was a council meeting Thursday night. There was and the, 300 and the people pipe, there. The pipe collapsed in the trailer park, flooded all of Capitola, and we literally, I slid home in the mud. <laughs> like the, it was, the entire town was full of mud. Yeah. I walked there from my house, yeah. and I walked by the station where the doors open, and there was, it was full of mud. Mud in there. And yeah. I don't know when, here's my point. If you call someone to rescue you and they can't get out of the garage, <laughs> yeah, you're like you're, yeah, you're hosed, mm -hmm. right? So that's how important Measure R is. Measure mm -hmm. R, yeah. Okay, well, I, yeah, I approve because I, I firsthand witnessed the day that you could not leave that fire station. The Capitola station, yeah. yeah. And SoCal's is the same thing. Yeah. Like it's, it's flooded. It flooded last year. Yeah. And, and really what we're trying to do is we're trying to make it, we want to be able to respond to the community as quickly as possible but as safely as possible. Yeah. And if we, to your point, TC, if you can't get out of the bays or you, or we're evacuating our own facility, mm -hmm. we're not able to help the community yeah. um, at their, their, cause you know your neighbor's flooding too, so we are gonna go help too, yeah. but um, not when we're evacuating our own well, stations. Well, vote as you wish, Measure but R. just accept the results. <laughs> That's all I Jason, got to say. Thank you for your service, my yeah. friend. Thank, thank you, you so much for coming yeah, down my tonight. Pleasure. We appreciate it. Yeah. You're welcome back anytime you want. Anything you want to say, you, the stage is yours, so. You're welcome to always come back. Right? We, we, we can come to the station whenever. We, Maybe the next time we'll do it from the station. We're mobile. Yeah, we'll check out one of those new trucks with the Look fancy... These guys who don't have out. jobs over here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, these two guys do not have jobs. They surf all over the world. What's that? How's that? How does he do that? Well, I want to know. I want to find out where you don't not working, but you get to surf... Listen, what were they just doing, at, TC? What, what were they just at? doing R&D in Central America <laughs> on trees wax. Trees wax. Yeah, it's, that's what they're doing. Those <laughs> Thanks, are the buddy. guys right there yep. that are making a safer wax for surfboards. But there's a lot of R&D involved. Anybody who was admitted by the package. Oh, right? Sid Bruzy? Yeah, for sure. Sid, Bru Sid by the way. <laughs> Sid. We, we Sid. love you, Sid. Hey, anybody, from, anybody who was approved by Sid. Um... <laughs> While we're on the subject of wax, yeah, trees wax, trees wax. It's, it's, it's great, environmentally great friendly, cheap, world. right? Yeah, next generation surf wax. Christian, where can you buy it in Santa Cruz? My back buy of my it right truck. here at the boardroom. <laughs> <laughs> you buy it at free most line, shops, right? most shops. Yeah, most we shops. got an arrow free line. Yeah, blown oh. out. Yeah, and go. I'm gonna say, say say hi to Bob Pearson because his mom died the other day. So oh, I'm sorry, sorry Bob. Bob. Yeah. yeah, that's a bummer. Sorry, Bob. Um, Jason, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, TC. Yeah, Good to see you again. Yeah, thanks for keeping our community safe, keeping your staff motivated, and uh, and and looking towards the future. And so that's important, and we appreciate you. Wow. Uh, oh, by the way, off the radio show, our friend Jimmy Panetta, his oh. big mailer. 
We're on it, Neil. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> yeah. Jimmy Panetta. He, go, he went low. I think we're official. Yeah. It's right is there, it, folks. Is That's the us. You, is that the best you can do? I, Come on, Jimmy. He's coming back on the show. October 2nd. Yes. Uh, good night, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. Chief. Um, Chief, always great having you here. Thank Thanks, you guys. Buddy. Yep. Thank you. We'll have you back soon. Uh, good night, everybody. We'll see you next time on the Off Lip Radio Show.